Hey book lovers, Kaylee here and welcome back to the Enchanted Library. And today we're going to do another tag. I was tagged by the lovely Megan over at the May Cave to do the All About Me tag. Question number one is what do you study or what do you do for your job? And it has been many, many moons since I have been in school, so it's really what I do for my full-time job. And for that, I work at a dental office. I went to school for dental assisting, but now when I'm in the real world, I'm actually focusing more on administrative work and also talking with patients about what treatment they need, um, financing, insurance, basically all the nitty gritty stuff. But I love it because I get to educate people and I'm really interested in dental as a whole. Question number two is what is your favorite social media channel? I don't really think this should come as any surprise, but I love YouTube. I don't have cable. I watch YouTube basically as my entertainment other than reading and a few other things which I'll get into at a future question. But yeah, I just, I love YouTube. And as a very, very close second, I would say Instagram. I feel like there are so many creative people on both platforms that I just, I want to eat it all up. I want to devour everything on YouTube and everything on Instagram and I just I love them both so much. Question number three is if you had another channel what would it be about? And I really didn't have to think too hard about this one because I would love to do a travel channel. I don't get to travel nearly as much as I would like to and I think that a travel channel would just sort of give me a kick in the butt so then that way I would actually go out and do more. And I also love channels like Hey Nadine and also uh, the Vega Brothers and I just I think they do such amazing videos with their travels that I would love to do something similar but obviously with my own take. And there is a series that I do want to do on this channel that is going to help me get towards that goal a little bit more, um, but that's in the future, but I am planning things. Question number four is do you play any instruments? And I played a couple when I was younger. I will say the one that I've done the longest is voice, and basically for as long as I can remember, I was always doing vocals. I was always in choir growing up. I took vocals from basically the moment that I could do choir up until the end of high school, and I just, I really enjoy it. I love to sing. I'm very out of practice now, but singing in the car is still one of my favorite things. Other instruments that I've played, other than, I guess, my voice, is piano. I did that for several years. Another instrument that I played was actually in high school. My <laughs> my last name starts with a Z, so I am at the very end. And whenever you were in school and everything had to go by alphabet, um, I was always the last. So when it came to music class and having to pick an instrument, I got stuck with the leftovers and I ended up getting stuck with the French horn. I learned the heck out of that instrument. I rocked the French horn. My teacher said that I was the best French horn player that they had ever heard and that just really stroked my ego. I'm not gonna lie. And another instrument that I learned was the violin. I had a lot of fun learning the violin. I wasn't able to purchase my own so I always had to rent, but I ended up naming it Loxley because I'm obsessed with Robin hood and well when you're playing violin you have your bow and bow and arrows robin hood loxley that's where my brain went with that i remember doing my first like concert i guess for it and i didn't tell anybody about it like i did not tell anybody about it i had a family reunion that day and i didn't go because i wanted to play but nobody knew why i wasn't at the family reunion that is why i was not there um because i was playing the violin to a crowd of people who did not know me because I, <laughs> you know, felt like doing that and wanted to challenge myself because I have horrible stage fright. So I figured, hey, let's challenge myself, huh? And actually at that concert, I ended up singing a cappella, and it was the, <laughs> I did a cappella singing and violin for the theme song from Outlander. And I'm still obsessed with that song. I had a lot of fun with it. I did the first few verses a cappella, and then I came in with the violin for it. Um, and then the other ones that I did was I played a lot of Beatles on the violins. So I did some Beatles music after I did the Outlander song because you have to do like traditional Celtic stuff, right, with violin. And then let's just throw in the Beatles because they're amazing. Question number five is what other hobbies do you have other than reading? Oh my gosh, where do I start? I have 
so many hobbies. I hate downtime. I always need to be doing something, which is probably a detriment to the rest of my life, but I just love doing things. One thing that I like to do is crafting. I like to try things and make things. So I've sewn costumes, I've made cross-stitch pillows, which I'll actually put a picture to one up here that I gave one of my friends. I also love going to the theater. I don't get to go enough. There's just something about watching people perform on stage. It's just so amazing and magical and I cry at the end all the time because every time that they come out and they do their final bows and people stand and give a standing ovation, I get so wrecked. Like I'm an emotional wreck because it's just all of the effort that they've put into it, all of the emotion that they've drawn, it's just it's such a, it, it gives me the feels, I'm just gonna say that. Another thing is business planning. I do a lot of business planning over in the past probably 10, 15 years. I have planned many businesses. Unfortunately, a lot of them I didn't continue with because I found out that during my business planning process, the business that I planned had already happened. So somebody else had already done it and that always sort of guts me but I still have a lot of plan fun planning everything and I do have a project that I'm working on right now that I am so invested in and so excited about. Another thing that I do as a hobby is I play D&D. Every Thursday night I have a campaign that I play with a few friends and I, <laughs> my character is a halfling rogue and her name is Kithri Tealeaf and I absolutely love her. I just, I love the idea that I can develop her and I absolutely love battle and it's just so much fun and uh, like it's just, I love D&D. And the last hobby that I'm going to talk about is the one that I am the most probably invested in. Other than the business planning side of things, I love to write. And that's going to be no surprise to anybody I feel like on booktube. I feel like everybody and their mother is trying to write a book and I am one of those people. I have been writing for as long as I can remember and I just, I love the idea of writing. I have so many different ideas for books and I just love being able to collaborate with friends and get together for write-ins. We used to do that more when I was younger, but we would just set up at a coffee shop and write for hours and chat with each other about different ideas that we have. And then we just do like this spitball thing. And it's just, I love it. I love it so, so much. It's such an amazing creative outlet. And right now I'm working on three different stories, but one of them I'm really focusing on and it's one that I had sort of pre-planned about nine years ago. And I'm finally gearing up and getting into it and I'm loving it so much and I can't wait to see what happens with it. Question number six is favorite TV shows. And this is another one that I have a list of because I really enjoy good television. Unfortunately, a lot of these are no longer on the air anymore because they have either completed or were canceled before their time which I'm pretty sure all of you know which ones I'm talking about, but I am going to list them for you guys and hopefully you will have seen them. If not, I highly, highly encourage you checking them out. So the first one is Friends, and I feel like that is a quintessential show. Growing up, I wanted my 20s to be like the show Friends. I feel like my 20s are more like the song, <laughs> like the actual theme song. Another show is the classic Firefly. I mean, <laughs> When I say cancelled before their time, that has to be the first thing that you thought of, right? And I know that we got the movie, and the movie did a lot to answer a lot of questions, but there could have just been so much more. And I did hear recently, like they have had com comics in the past, but I heard recently that they are redoing the comics, so we are going to have more stories from Serenity, and I'm just so game for it. I recently sold like 300 of my comics, so I I think I'm gonna have to start recollecting again. Another show that I loved that was canceled before its time is also very recently, and that is Timeless. I am a clock blocker. I absolutely loved that show, and I'm so sad that it ended up getting canceled after season two. I know that we got a season two because the fans were amazing, and it was just such 
like everybody just came to bat for this show, but they just did not have the numbers to make a season three. So it is canceled and I'm very sad. It was an amazing time travel show and they just had so many subplots and the production value of every single episode was amazing. I can't get over what they were able to do in their short two seasons. But there is a rumor that there's going to be a movie and with that season two cliffhanger, I should hope there will be. Another show that I loved and probably the reason that I ended up getting Twitter was Chuck. And Chuck is just everything in my life. It's got spies, it's got espionage, it's got nerds, it's got really hot guys. And if you want a really fun comedy and you just want to binge something, I highly recommend it. Plus it stars Zachary Levi and I mean, you're gonna, I'm, yeah. Another show is one that is ongoing and that is Victoria and that is put out by ITV overseas and we get it here a bit later but oh my goodness Victoria is amazing and I don't care that Victoria and Albert are cousins I just pretend that it's not a thing because I absolutely love them together I absolutely love that show it is fascinating and it was written by Daisy Goodwin who also wrote a lot of um, books about Victoria and about Albert and she just knows her stuff inside and out about the monarchy and she writes like pretty much every episode like she helped create it and I just I am so grateful to her writing it because it's just amazing and I did pick up the Victoria book that she also wrote and I'm I'm so excited to read it another show that was almost canceled but is an amazing comedy is Brooklyn Nine-Nine I am so happy that so many people know about this show now because, oh my gosh, it's so funny, it's so prevalent, it's so smart. Like, there's just so much about that show that you think you're just getting into it for a fun little rompy comedy. But no, you're gonna learn some stuff. You are going to have fun. And it's just gonna be a wild ride all in all. And it's just a quick 20 minute every week. And it's just, ugh. I love it so much. Watch it if you have not yet. Another show that only had two seasons, but that's the way BBC works, and that is Our Girl. Each season actually has a different female lead, and it focuses on them in the army and dealing with their battalion and being a woman in the army over in England. And I just love both of those seasons so much, and if you have not watched them, definitely do. They're short seasons, but it's just... Ah, it's, it's an amazing, amazing show. I've only got two more to talk about. Um, another is a BBC one and it got canceled before I felt like I was ready for it to be canceled. And that was The Three Musketeers because, ha, huh, <laughs> The Three Musketeers. I love that show. And it does have a few seasons, at least in Canada, it is still on Netflix. So, oh, please watch it. It is so good. It's another one of those shows that the production value is just so amazing and I can just rewatch episodes repeatedly because there's always something that I catch. I always like to figure out the behind the scenes stuff and I just absolutely love that show. And the last show that I'll talk about is another current one and oh my god, it's my everything. I have been a big fan since day one and I just I absolutely love it and everything that they're doing with it right now, every episode gets better and better. Every season is like triple as amazing as the previous season and that is The 100. If you have not watched The 100, please, please do. It, season one is so different and so separate to where it's at right now. It's insane that it's the same show. It is based on the Cass Morgan series, which was actually published, okay, how did this time frame go? It was, she wrote the story, she got the publishing deal, but then at the same time, she also got the show deal. So the book and the show came out together, but it's just, it's so weird that the way that it happened, are they're just two totally separate entities. I love a lot of the stuff that happens in the books, but that also, also takes place within a couple months, whereas the show has taken place over years. So it's just, they're two totally different things, but I will say that Bellark is my everything. Do not say anything about Klexa. Don't tell me anything about Bellamy and this other person. Don't, <laughs> because I can't deal with it. I need Bellark in my life. I need it to happen. And that's why every time that there is a break within the seasons, I end up rereading the books because that gives me what I want. And I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting, Jason. Make it happen for me, please. <laughs> ah, 
okay, that was a long question and answer, so let's go on to seven. Question number seven is what got you into reading? And I've always read, so I guess I can be thankful for my parents for that, for reading to me when I was a child. And honestly, one of the amazing, amazing things that they did for me was they did not vet what I read. So they didn't edit what I read. They didn't tell me what I could or couldn't read. So I read every genre. I read every age group before I was 10 pretty much. So I am so grateful to my parents for just letting my imagination run free, run rampant, let me go to the library, pick what I wanted, and just read. And I absolutely love them for it. Question number eight is what is your favorite genre and least favorite genre? And my favorite, I I gotta say it's fantasy. I absolutely love world building. I love the politics. I love everything that comes with fantasy. You can have so much creative outlets with fantasy that I just, I can't get enough of it. So yeah, I would say my favorite is fantasy. Be that YA, be that adult. It's just fantasy all around. My least favorite, I would have to say probably contemporary YA because that just means high school and I have yet to find a really amazing high school YA book. I just, I'm not a fan of them as much. I'll still read them. It's just not what I'm drawn to. So that's why I guess I'll say that it's my least favorite. Question number nine is what books define your childhood? And there were so many. Um, okay, so Robert Munch, anything Robert Munch wrote, um, Little Golden Books, all of them, the Berenstain Bears, that one for sure, that series. Um, what else? Full House Michelle. I ended up reading like a Full House Michelle book every night until I was completely done them. So those ones were a big thing for me. Um, Nancy Drew, Anne of Green Gables, um, anything William Shakespeare. Little Women, I absolutely loved Little Women. Um, yeah, there's oh, there's just so many. And then there was this set that we got when we were kids, my brother and I, and it was um, Mother Goose, I think is just what it was called. And it was a goose that was animatronic and it had like a tape deck that you could put into like underneath its wing and it would read you stories and then you also had the books to go along with it so you could read like Rumpelstiltskin and it was just, it was a lot of fun. I remember that vividly. It was kind of like, um, like, you know, the idea of Teddy Rockspin, that sort of thing. I didn't have one of those, but I definitely had a mother goose. And then the last question is, tell us something interesting about yourself. And this is a tough one. So I have decided that I'm not going to say something interesting about myself because I just don't know what you guys would find interesting. So I'm just going to give you a handful of random facts about me. And first things first, I learned archery. So I have my Katniss replica bow and arrows that my brother got me for my birthday one year. Um, but the reason that I took archery was actually because I'm obsessed with Robin Hood, like I said earlier. Um, another thing about me is that I'm obsessed with Disney. I love Disney films and I am desperate to get to Disney World or Disneyland. Anywhere, please, I want to go. I just have not been able to in ever. So I love Disney. I have seen Beauty and the Beast more times than I can count. It is one of my all-time favorite films and I'm just obsessed with Disney. I love singing all Disney and it's just it's super fun. Another thing is when I was younger I did not read Harry Potter until I felt pressured into reading Harry Potter. I'm sorry to just sort of blurt that out there, but that is how it is. I did not read Harry Potter when it first came over. I was probably, how old was I? I think I was 12 by the time I read Harry Potter for the first time, and it had come out when I was maybe nine. So it took a while for me to get into Harry Potter, but once I did, I was obsessed. And the reason that I sort of got into it was because my friends in elementary school, they called me Hermione. So I really wanted to know why I was being called Hermione. I didn't understand it at the time, um, but yes. So the nickname Hermione got me into reading Harry Potter. 
And also, to sort of round things out with that, I worked at Shoppers Drug Mart on the midnight release of The Deathly Hollows, and so I worked that release. And I helped sort of organize everything, and I dressed up as Hermione, because the girls in the cosmetics lab, they really wanted to tease my hair. So I ended up having like a fro of hair, and I had my uniform on because I was in high school and I went to Catholic school, so we had our uniforms, and it's just, it was a lot of fun. The nickname Hermione even followed me into high school too because I would quote one of the lines from the first film and it got to the point where even teachers were coming up to me asking me to do the quote and I don't I mentioned this now but I don't even know if I can do it hold on let me let me try it's probably been a good like 12 years since I've done this That's right. Now, if you two don't mind, I'm going to bed before either of you come up with another clever idea to get us killed. Or worse, expelled. <laughs> that was cringy, but yes, I ended up having to say that line more times than I can count for teachers and friends. And I guess the last of my random facts would be I don't have a bucket list, but I have an epic quest of awesome and I love it so, so much. If you don't know what an epic quest of awesome is, I highly recommend checking out the blog nerdfitness.com and Steve Cam, who created that blog and is still active on it to this day, many, many years ago, made an epic quest of awesome and I adapted that as soon as I heard about it. So I have had this epic quest for probably about 11 years or however long he's had his website because that was one of the first things that he talked about on that site and I have been a follower for a very long time um, but basically what it is is it's a bucket list but you make it so much more so there are levels there are badges and you basically just adapt it to yourself so everything that you do gets you to a different level so it's kind of like living your life like an RPG which I'm gonna nerd about so much <laughs> but um, anything that you can do to get up to a level 60 or a level 100 or 150 whatever you want your maximum level to be you make these little quests to achieve that and each quest is worth points and then if you achieve all of the quests in one aspect so like say I want to travel a lot so there's a lot of things that there's a lot of places that I want to go to and each time I go to those places I get points and then if I complete all of the places that I want to go to then I get a badge so it's just this whole interactive way to live your life which is kind of weird to put it that way but it just is and I love it so much and if you want a bucket list but you sort of don't like the idea of a bucket list, do an epic quest of awesome because it is amazing. All right, so I think this tag went a lot longer than what I had anticipated. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to tag Tara over at the three bookshelves to do this tag because I think that she would have a lot of cool answers for these as well. And don't forget that I will put links to everything in the description down below. So links to Megan's video, the original creator of the tag if I can find them, as well as the questions, and all of my social media will be down below as well. So be sure to follow me on those because I love Twitter and Instagram and everything. So definitely give me a follow and Goodreads too because obviously I am a book reader. So don't forget to follow me there. I pretty much friend everybody because I just love seeing everybody's books. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. And until next time, keep reading.